In this lesson, we'll cover diagrammatic materials in V-Ray. To begin with, let's open the Asset Editor. And over in the Materials tab, click on the flyout to the left, and you'll see there's a whole folder for diagrammatic. Go ahead and click that. These diagrammatic materials are used for stylized renderings. So let's go ahead and scroll down this list here. I want to find the option for Tune. We'll go ahead and pick Tune 02 and drag it over to our material list. Then let's go ahead and start an interactive render. So to begin with, we just have a generic material applied to everything. I'll move this over to the side and back over in the Asset Editor. Right click on the word generic in your material list and select Objects in Scene. That'll select everything that has the generic material. And then let's right click on Tune and Apply Material to Selection. And you'll see that that gets applied to everything there. Now I'll fold this in for a moment, move this over and fly out the right menu. And we'll look at how this Tune material works. So you start with the base material here you can change that. For example, we can change that to white. And what you'll see is ultimately the tune material is about giving you a base material and then an outline color. So this is really good for silhouettes. Let's change the line color. Click on the swatch and let's switch it to black. Close that down. So you can see how that effect takes shape in the interactive render here. You can add a little bit more interest to your line by adding a line texture. So I'll draw a region and then come over to the line texture and click on this texture slot here. We'll pick checker and we'll change some things about the color of this checker. And we can see the effect over here. For now though, I'll go back, I'll right click and I'll clear that out. Another thing we can adjust is the line width. So of course you could make it thicker or thin it out a bit. I'll clear the region so that the whole thing updates with those settings. As the interactive render updates, I'll draw a new region around just this tree here, and I'll zoom in just a little bit on it. So back over in the Asset Editor, let's take a look at some of the other parameters. The opacity is going to be the strength of the overall material. So as you slide this down, you'll lessen the strength of both the base material and the line colors. I'll dial that back up to 1. For the distortion, you distort the lines. So if I move it just a little bit here, you see that we're distorting those outlines. Again, I'll take that back down to 0, and I'll zoom back away. I'll draw a new region around just this little area here and zoom in so that we can talk about the overlap threshold. If you slide the slider to the left, you'll notice that you pick up new details for the line work. So the more detailed your model is, the more you might consider sliding the slider to the left to pick up that detail. In the frame buffer, I'll redraw the region again around this portion. And you see this black or really dark gray areas? These are actually just reflections or refractions of the outlines. Back over here in the asset editor, if you uncheck Do Secondary, notice what effect that has. It will remove those. So in other words, the secondary or the reflection and the refraction will no longer pick up those outlines. And so again, if I clear the region, you'll see where that has an impact in a few areas as we pick up less of that. It also will render a bit more quickly. Let's take a look at another diagrammatic material. First though, I'll draw a region just around this tree here. And then back over in the Asset Editor in the Material List, the left flyout in the diagrammatic folder, let's go down to where it says wireframe transparent and we'll add that one here to the material list. Then back in the SketchUp model, I'll make sure to select just that tree that I've got the region drawn around. And then back over in the asset editor, I'll add that material to the selection. So you can see here the interactive render is updating. And in the asset editor with the right flyout, we see here that there's a texture being used for the diffuse slot. So I'll click on that. And it's the edges texture here. So this edges texture is helping us find all of the edges. And then there is no background color. It's transparent. So this will be like a wireframe. So of course, you can play around with these settings. But for now, I'll be fine with the default. I'll click back. And I want to apply that to the other trees as well. So I'll get rid of the frame buffer for just a moment. And back in the SketchUp model, I'll select those other trees and apply that material to it. Then I'll open that frame buffer back up. OK, another interesting material here in the Asset Editor. Click the Fly Out again. And I'll scroll up the list and add this Fall Off 2. For the Fall Off material, we have one color that's applied to vertical surfaces and another color for the horizontal surfaces. So let's see how this works here in our model. In the frame buffer, I'll draw a new region here around part of the model. Then back over in the Asset Editor. Go ahead and select Tune 02, right click on it, select all the objects in the scene that have that applied to it, and then click on Fall Off, right click and apply material to selection. 
So you can see here we have white on surfaces oriented in one direction and brown in surfaces that are oriented perpendicular to that. The fall off texture can be good for procedural snow. So for example, in fall off, if you fly out the right menu and you click here to see what's being used, we have a mix. So we have source A and source B. So you can go in there and perhaps try adjusting these to see what sort of effect you get. I'll go ahead and close this down, go back here. And one more material we want to try in the diagrammatic folder. We'll scroll down to where it says maquette and we'll drag in the maquette wood A01 and the maquette wood B01. Now these are going to be really good for turning this into what feels like a small architectural model that has been built out of wood. So first let's go ahead and select everything that we've got fall off applied to right now. So I'll right click on fall off, select objects and scene, then right click on maquette wood A01 and apply material to selection. Back over here in the frame buffer, I'll go ahead and remove the region so that we can see this applied across the whole model. Now, as this is updating, we're gonna use the other wood as well. So I'll dismiss the frame buffer for a moment with the select tool in SketchUp. I'll select just this piece here, and then I'll apply maquette wood B to that selection. So we have a slight variation in the wood being used for this piece here. So you can see this is starting to look like a wooden hand-built model here, but to lend the last little bit of realism to that effect, let's go back over to the asset editor and we'll click on the settings here, twirl down the camera settings, and we'll turn on the depth of field and use defocus to give it the effect as if we've pointed our camera at it. And we'll do this to give it the effect as if we've taken a picture with our DSLR camera. We'll make this effect quite strong. 